Hey everybody, it's Tracy here. <clears throat> I want to share with you my latest junk journal I created. As you can see, it's a sewing junk journal. Um, it probably took me about three or four weeks to create and I think this is like take 20 for recording. But we're going to get through this. So it is eight and a quarter inches tall five and a half inches wide, and then the spine is just under three inches wide. It has three signatures, and I'm not really sure how many pages because I didn't really keep track, but I think it turned out pretty good. So I just have a vintage sewing tape um, for the closure. I used bits and pieces it throughout the journal. Um, the spine has some of the Tim Holtz tape measure on there. It has some fabric pieces on there, some Dollar Tree lace, some bias tape, and then a zipper. Um, my grandkids asked me why I had so many zippers, and when you look through this, you'll see why. She has two tassels, only because when I went to punch the hole for the reading fastener, I was very off-centered, so I thought, I'll just put two on there. And those are just Tim Holtz ring fasteners with some bulb pins that I got from Timu. The tassels have some rick rack, some vintage lace, some vintage ribbon, some fabric. Um, there's some baker's twine, all things that I used throughout the journal um, because it just, I mean, why not? And then I also took some thread and tied on a couple charms that I got from Timu. There's, this one has a tape measure and a sewing needle. I'm not sure that you can see it. And I'm not going to take the tassels off because they're not easy to take off. And then <laughs> over here, this one has a sewing machine and a pair of scissors charms. And I've used those throughout the book as well. So we're going to go ahead and open it up. On this front cover, I used my pinking shears and just cut around the edges of the pattern and put it on some fabric. On the inside, I did, oh wait, the back cover is the back, the rest of the front cover. It was a big, big, one of those bigger patterns. So I did the same with that one. And so then back to the front inside cover is part of the back of the package for the pattern, which is funny because it has all these measurements on it, but it says measure free. And I just used my pinking shears on there as well. Over here is some paper that I got from Tamu. It's like the fabric um, material that they use to cut the pattern out on, but it's not. It's kind of got a bit of a texture and just more of that pattern there. Over here, this is, so a couple years ago, I bought a bunch of buttons from my local thrift shop. And in when I got home, I noticed inside the bag was tags from pieces of clothing. There was the little bags that you get your extra buttons in with a piece of clothing. And the bags had little notes on them or in them that said, this is for the pink and white shirt that I got from Susie for my 50th birthday, stuff like that. And I thought that was really cool. So I kept those. Um, so I just glued it on here, but I did stitch it a little bit. I'm still kind of scared to use my sewing machine on junk journals, so I haven't done that yet. More of that pattern, and then some elastic here with some vintage ribbon and rickrack. And then this is just a little flip out. I did hand stitch on that zipper, and it still works, and there's a little bit of ribbon underneath of that. Just put it on an envelope, and um, it flips out. And I just put the, the flap for the pattern on there and that flips out a little bit more. Made a little tuck spot with some collage of fabrics and the material, the patterns and whatnot. And just a little journaling spot or, you know, pictures or whatever. Um, using parts of the pattern and handmade paper and fabric. And then over here, this has like a little um, flip down as well, just a doily that I inked up with some bias tape and buttons. And this actually can flip out as well. Got to use all the everything, you know. 
And then I finally used some of my doilies in this. I have like two or three tubs full of doilies and I never use them. So I threw one of those in, in there. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then some handmade paper. I'm not even sure where I got it at, but I'm trying to use all my stuff. This here is really cool. I am, one of my junk journal groups, I mean, over on Facebook, somebody shared a video on how to make aged looking tape. So of course I had to try it. And if you want to know how, just let me know. Um, so I just did that there and it's on a stationary envelope and then a little tuck spot there. And I just stamped it. This I actually got at my local Goodwill. It was one of those job work order forms. <clears throat> More of that vintage um, ribbon on some of that handmade paper. And then over here is another one of those little charms, just a little safety pin on a paper clip and some tape, uh, bias tape there. And then some vintage lace. Now this isn't the package for it, but I thought it worked perfectly on coffee dyed ledger paper. <clears throat> and then back in March, I challenged myself to do master boards, which I'd never even heard of before, but I ended up doing one master board for each day of the month so that I could use them when I'm making my journals. And so that's what this here is. And just a little piece of cardstock, and I used my fascinator. Y'all have those, or look at, be on the lookout for them. I'm not sure if you can get the staple still or not, but. And then some Tim Holtz uh, tape measure. I tried to distress it a little bit <clears throat> with my scissors. This here is some fabric from my last junk journal, and I just glued that on for a little flip. And then over here is the school. Um, like learn to write paper from the Dollar Tree with the center of my signature. And then right here, I just took some elastic and a safety pin and some fabric and put that together. And then on the end of my Baker's Twine, <clears throat> I just frayed it a little bit and put some buttons on there. And then more of that vintage tape. And then I just took some paper clips <clears throat> and tied some a button stack on there. More vintage lace. Excuse me a second. <clears throat> Sorry about that. Over here I just did a little flip up with some bias tape there and more of that pattern. This here, I'm not sure where I got it. A friend gave it to me or something, but I just distressed that a little bit. And then there's some cardstock there with more of the pattern stuff on there. Oh, and there's a piece of fabric on the back. And then more of that Tim Holtz tape measure. This flips out. And then this here is from a journal that I picked up at my local Goodwill and I really liked the paper. So I, I grabbed that, of course. <clears throat> more of that journal paper there and the other part of that doily. And then this here has, this is from Tamu, and I fussy cut her off of some paper and just stuck her on there. She flips down and there's another one of those uh, pieces from Tamu and a charm over here with some reading glasses. And then I just took one of my stamps and did some journaling lines. Um, more of those, I don't know where I got it, but I think I should have copied them before I cut them all up. <laughs> And just a playing card that I put some fabric pieces on there. <clears throat> and it just flips back like that. And then over here is more of that job, job work order form. And it just flips up with some bias tape and some uh, lace there. And then I just punched out some of the playing cards and put a paper doily on there, which I got that from Tamu as well. They have some really good stuff on there. I know people have their opinions about it, but I've never personally had any issues with them. I'm actually waiting for another package to come here in a few days. <laughs> Anyways, um, just took some fabric here and some buttons and more of the pattern. And that's the end of my first signature. And then on the inside, I put some bias tape and some rick rack because I forgot to cover that before I stitched in my signatures. <laughs> Over here is just a paper doily on a piece of the, the pattern and another zipper. 
And this, I don't, I think it's just another notepad I picked up at the Goodwill and I just used my alcohol inks on there. And this is just a, um, a bookmark that I put some different things on it and packaging from a buttons. And this is like one of the little things I made with the paper clips and buttons. Oops. And it just clips on there however you want. <clears throat> And then over here we have some coin envelopes, tuck spots, more of that packaging, and I just put a little cardstock on there. And this is more of my um, master boards that I made, and some more doilies from the from Tamu. This one was fun to make because I was kind of like had a brain fog or something, but I just kind of did a waterfall, but a different way. So I just put some lace on there and some buttons. And uh, this is that Tim Holtz uh, fabric tape. And just a little journaling spot there. And then over here, I did a little flip out, but I cut out the center of a playing card and put a book page on there and a little writing spot. And then I made a pocket with the pocket part of the pattern. And this is more of my master board. And look, there's pockets on there. <laughs> um, clever I'm just going to set that in there and this is another doily I almost thought it would be too big for it but it fit perfectly and all my doilies I took and soaked them in some coffee that my husband didn't end up drinking before going to work and I just love how they turned out um, this is the center of that playing card from over here and I just put it over there with some buttons and distressed it a little bit and then some of the Tim Holtz ephemera there. And another one of those charms, a sewing machine. <clears throat> Over here, I did a little belly band with, this is from the Work Basket magazines. And some more of the Tim Holt, I mean, excuse me, Timu doilies. And then this here, I got off of Peachy Cheap. I got a couple packs of them just recently. Actually, the mailman delivered them to my neighbors. We have 10 houses on our road and he can't figure it out. Anyways, <laughs> over here I took an envelope and I folded it in half and then um, just kind of cut the flip up because I thought this was going to be the center of a page, but it ended up not being so. And there's little tuck spots there. More of that pattern and that aged um, paper or tape. And then on the back here, I did these little pockets and put some tags on there with more of those girls from Tamu, more of my master board. And, um, okay, it doesn't want to go there. There we go. There's more of the master board there. And one more piece here. It just makes it so much easier. Like I never thought about it. And then, like I said, somebody mentioned it in my groups and I was like, well, that's kind of clever. Center my second signature with a couple more buttons, some more of that journaling page. And then I just put this, this card of buttons on there. And then over here I did this, but I feel like I might need to put it somewhere else. But I took a bulb pin and just did a little baggie with some lace and some elastic and some buttons. Um, this is more of that paper from Tamu, and then I did, took these, I thought that was kind of cool to just make pockets out of those, and used my whale tail punch for that. Um, this one actually has two pieces, or no, it folds out. They both fold out, I believe. Um, sorry, it's a little hot here, and I'm sticking to everything. <laughs> this one... Oh, it's stuck. It's glued stuck. Glued closed. There we go. Okay. And then the back of that page, I did a couple pockets. Um, tags there. With some rickrack and some bulb pins. A pocket on a pocket. Um, and the pockets are, of course, my master boards. And then another pocket on a pocket. And, um, oops, 
all fumbly today. Sorry about that, guys and gals. Um, and then that other part of that doily, I just really love how that dried. And then over here, this was actually like a little plastic box. It had little pieces of not, they weren't post-it notes, but they were size of post-it notes. So I just cut, or fussy cut that out, ripped it rather, and book page. And then I took a zipper and put pieces of it on here. Over here is just a book page pocket. Um, and then more of those Tamu doilies. And then more of that vintage tape measure. And this is, um, it's called So Easy, I think, something like that. But it's a little tool that has like five different little heads you can interchange on it and make different stitching patterns and then hand stitch it. Um, and then I have this little flip up here and another paper clip with some scissors. And that's the back of my signature. This does fold out another one of those little tags from the pieces of clothing. And this little, uh, thing from Tamu as well. They're flimsy, but they work. Um, and then the center of the second and third signature with more bias tape and rickrack. And center back. This is for the full tummy, if you want a full tummy. I'm not sure what that means, but it's from part of the pants pattern. And then more of that school paper. And this tag is really like a tight squeeze because of how I did it. Uh, just a book page with some pattern paper and more of that Tim Holtz uh, tape measure. A little lace and rake rack there. This page is kind of heavy-ish. And then I thought this would be really cool to make this uh, pattern uh, packaging into a pocket. So I have this here with more of that vintage tape. And I did fussy cut it around it a little bit. They're normally like a straight edge. And then there's another pocket here. There's actually two pockets there. And then that, I just, this is a little fold out. Um, and more of that Tim Holtz fabric tape. And then just some little flips here. And another one of my little button, um, button collage things and another safety pin oops and then another flip down here and i did kind of a little notepad here but i used um the tim holtz tape measure to adhere it to the page just to make it a little fun another one of my little doilies and just more journaling spots there and then over here, this is, you know, the transfer from that pocket back there. The, tra the you know, for embroidery or whatever. And then a couple little tags from my master board. And some bias tape. And then another safety uh, paper clip with a sewing needle. And then the center of my signature with a couple more buttons. This is that stationary from the envelope earlier. And another little flip up and that doily again. I'm just so proud of myself for using my doilies. And then this I saw on, on um, Pinterest and I thought that's kind of cool. You just slice the pocket or the card and make it into a tuck spot. And so I have three little pullouts there. And that actually folds down as well. And then this girl is from Timu as well. This this piece comes off here, and it's another paper clip with a tape measure. A little journaling spot there. And it just goes on there. And then over here I have another belly band from that I made from my master board and another one of those girls. And then over here, I just took a sticker, but I put some um, thread underneath of it. And this is more of my master boards. And then another belly band here. And a journaling spot on the back. And 
then more vintage tape there, or not tape, excuse me, lace. And then another tuck spot from the Work Basket magazine and another one of those girls. And then I just took this, I wasn't really sure, but it's from the Work Basket magazine as well. And just kind of tucked that in there. And then the inside back cover of the junk journal is the rest of the pattern measurements and pricing and whatnot. So if you stuck with me that long, I want to say thank you very much. And I hope that you enjoyed this junk journal as much as I did making it. And hopefully I will have another book or two coming out really soon. I have some ideas. But again, I wanted to say thanks for stopping by, liking and subscribing, commenting, big thumbs up, and you all have a fabulous day. Bye.